Yo, what's going on guys, it's Actix here, bringing you guys the third and final part of my first episode of my start to finish. And uh, so yeah, basically, we are going to finish up our background with exactly where we left off, which is where we created our CC for our render. So actually, first things first, I just want to say big shout out to, um, sorry, I totally forgot your name, Hetra. Mindless Hetra, he made my graffiti sigs, he's a really cool guy, so uh, I left his channel link in the description, you guys should check him out, really solid signature designer and he's a really cool guy, and um, also I wanted to let you guys know that Sinner Arts, the team that I am managing, uh, there was a slight issue with their channel, somehow their old channel got deleted, and uh, they were at 250 subs and released an RC and all that, but then all of a sudden the channel got deleted, so they have started over, so I would really appreciate it if you guys would head over there and uh, show some support, like possibly subscribe and even enter the RC because uh, I'm telling you guys, this is going to be a really great team, uh, so you should definitely check it out. So let's get back into our tutorial. Let's First things first, you're just going to get your render and your CC, and you're going to have your uh, layout, which is... Uh, excuse me, which can be downloaded from YouTube, very easy to find. Uh, you can either make your own or customize it, as I have, or just get a blank one from YouTube. Uh, that's perfectly fine. Just look up 2014 one-channel banner template or something like that. So let's get right into it. First things first, select everything you need, which is your color correction and your render, and then with the Move tool selected, just click and then just drag it into the tab just like that and there you go then let's just position our render pretty centered and uh, let me see there we go so that looks pretty good I'm thinking that's a bit too small just by the look of it so if you do control T that's your free transform tool and then if you hold shift uh, it will, while, I mean, okay, so if you don't hold shift and then you move around this arrow, it'll like mess up the proportions and you really don't want that because it'll mess up everything. So what you want to do is hold shift and alt at the same time while, while dragging this. And then, so what this does is it expands it while maintaining proportions from the center. So that pretty much keeps it in place and keeps your proportions intact. So after you're done, just hit enter on your keyboard, and there you go, you're done. You've uh, rescaled your render, and so that looks pretty good for now. First thing I'm noticing is that I kind of like this whole dark uh, part beneath the letters, and that, that's going to work really well when I'm making my background because it's going to make it blend really nicely. So I might as well just go with it immediately and just fix that. So make a new layer, get your black brush, Something not too big, uh, maybe like two, three hundred pixels. And then I'm just going to do a very quick mask down here. And there we go. So that's slightly darkened the, the bottom of the layer of the letters. And as you can see, it makes it look like they're fading into the background, which is good because that's like the most important thing you can do when making banners is um, making sure that they fade and uh, flow with the rest of the, of the piece. So next thing is looking for your stocks. Now I'm going to be using my my stocks pack, which you can find in the description if you want to buy it. There's so many other packs, but you know if if you really want to make it easier, uh, you might as well just go ahead and buy it. So that, there you go, that's the promotion right there. Um, what I always start off with is finding textures. So getting a good texture behind your render and basically the overall background. So since this is a pretty grungy render, I'm thinking I'm just going to go with the same flow and uh, let's go to my textures and I'm just going to bring in a pretty grungy material or non material texture. Let's bring this one in. This is the same one that we use to texture our render, but it's going to work fine. We're just going to put it behind our logo just like that and then hit control J to duplicate it and then just move it over so that it covers the entire length of the banner, like that. Then you want to select both of them and then uh, press Control e which is the shortcut for merge, and as you can see it's merged both of the layers into one. Now I would just turn down the opacity because this is kind of excessive and it just stands out a bit too much. 
So really barely noticeable. So as you can see, it's very, very faint, but it's still a texture. And uh, it's the devil's in the detail, so you want to make sure that uh, you you like put every single detail in there and ma make it count. So usually one layer isn't enough just because it's just one basic layer. So I might as well add another one. I'm going to use... Um, hmm. Um, I think I'm just going to go with anything else that's grungy. There we go. I'll, I'll go with this. I'm just going to rotate it. So control T, right click anywhere, and then just click rotate 90 degrees, and that perfectly rotates it. I'm just going to do the same thing. Just have it go all over. But as you can see, it's got kind of this edge, but don't worry, we'll fix that in a second just to make it blend nicely and so duplicate it enough times and then what you want to do is click on the for example right here this line right here I don't I really don't want that to show so find your layer the layer that's on top get your eraser get a pretty large brush make sure it's a soft brush and then you just wanna make sure your opacity is is not on a hundred anything but a hundred and then just tap on the sides, on the edge, and what that'll do is it'll make it blend perfectly into the next one. So same thing, same thing here. This is the overlapping texture, so let's just delete that a little bit. And as you can see, it blends it perfectly. So uh, we got kind of lucky here, but that'll do. That'll be fine. So then you just want to select all of them, Control E to merge. Then let's just bring down the opacity. Let's see. All right, so that should be pretty good. Uh, as I said, it's barely, barely. Actually, that's a bit too much. There we go. So barely visible, but uh, it's still, it's still there. Next thing, uh, what I always go for is a light source, and usually this is because the reason why I told you guys to um, make your renders point up and not down is because making a light source uh, can make your background look much more realistic, and just it'll make it look. Uh, much much better so make a new layer on top of everything else get a brush and this time you're gonna have to go big so you're gonna have to go close to 1200 pixels which is pretty damn huge then you're gonna pick a color that you want I'm gonna go with a orangey color there we go and then what you want to do is without actually having your brush go into the banner just have it go very lightly over it and what that does is it leaves this sort of like misty color and let me just center that and then just bring down the opacity and what that does is it does a nice uh, glow coming from the top of your background and so then just to match that what I tend to do is just bring in a flare and I'll just bring in the traditional flare which everybody has which is in every single pack in the world and then I'll just drag that right onto the top and then change the color by pressing Control U, and what that does is it opens your hue and saturation options for this specific layer. So for right now, I'm on the flare. Let's just move the hue along until we find the same color, which is orange. All right, so there we go. That looks good. Um, I'm thinking that's a bit too small, so just press Control T, hold Shift and Alt at the same time, and just drag it, make it bigger. And there we go. So the flare is much bigger now. Makes it a much bigger light source. And that's looking pretty good. Now, the only problem about that is that now that we've added textures and stuff like that, it's lightened up the background. So you can you can now see the gaps in between the layers. And we don't want that because we really... The, the, the most important thing about banners is that you make the render just fit perfectly with the rest of the banner. You don't want it to seem placed or just set on top of everything else. So right here, that's exactly what we're, we're gonna do. Uh, we're just gonna like make sure that this doesn't happen. So to fix that, you're just gonna make a layer right beneath your, as you can see, my render. I'm gonna get a black brush. And we can just bring this down because we don't need 1200 anymore. Um, something like that. And then just go around your text like so. Like that. You can turn down the opacity a little bit if you want. 
but that's pretty good. So already, as you can see, if I were to take off this layer, it just stands out too much and it just seems too placed. So just darken it a little bit behind and that'll make sure that everything um, fits perfectly. Next up, I'm thinking something like this uh, needs particles because kind of grungy, lava, nice big light source, so might as well use some like uh, yeah, some particles, some light particles, or spalk hair, or whatever it's pronounced, however it's pronounced. So look into your pack, or just go on Google and look up light light particles, and um, let's see what we can find. Uh, I like this one right here. So do the same thing. Drag and drop into your your banner, and this time I'd like to I like for it to go on top of my render because. It'll make it look like the light source is making these um, particles. So let's just duplicate it once again, make it go throughout the entire background. Select all of them, Command E. And now, before you do anything like this, whenever you see that these, um, these layers have a specific blending mode, try to remember it because when you merge them, what happens is it removes it. And as you can see now, it's completely black. So what you want to do is just go back to lighten, and that'll bring it back to the way it was before. Now let's bring down the opacity because it's kind of ridiculous. It's way, way, way too much. All right, so that looks pretty good, but it's still a bit excessive. So let's use our eraser. Press E on your keyboard. Uh, let's get a pretty big eraser once again. The important thing is using a soft brush, big eraser, and a pretty low opacity. So now what you're going to want to do is just round off the sides a little bit and so what that does is it just brings down the opacity on the sides and it looks like all the particles are coming from up here and that's exactly what we want so that looks good for now and uh, I'm just gonna bring in a second layer because I feel like it's necessary and this time I'm just gonna put it right onto the light source and that's gonna emphasize the fact that it's coming straight from there. So as you can see, boom, there we go. You've added your stock. Now, let's see, what are we missing? Um, some more effects. So I'm thinking we could use hmm, some smoke. So grab any smoke stock that you might have. And what I like to do is place it a bit off your text and then just have it like flow into your into your render like so I'm just gonna duplicate that flip horizontal and there we go so it looks pretty good and now that's kind of excessive once again so make sure it's on top of your on top of your text select them all and just bring down the opacity until you're happy so there we go that looks pretty good I like uh, this sort of like mysterious look that this is giving off and uh, maybe just one last touch I'd say duplicate your render just command or control J excuse me click on the one in the back then do control T hold the shift and all together make it slightly bigger than your current render and I'm just gonna make this taller too and there we go and now use your filter, blur, radial blur. And you're going to set the blur method to zoom and the quality to best. And I'd set the amount to something pretty, pretty high. So something like 60. Then hit OK. And what you're going to see is that the background or the, the duplicate of your, of your render is going to give this like glowing uh, blur that's like pulling in towards your main one and that's gonna give a nice blend around your your logo or, or or text or whatever and as you can see there you go that looks pretty good but that's still a bit too much so let's just bring down the opacity and there we go so it's it's a little touch but as I said the devil's in the details and that's just a little glow around your text that will make it look much much nicer now this is something that I'm pretty happy with but if I if I somehow like for some reason decide that I want to change the color or something let's just bring in a hue and saturation yeah okay we don't want to do that alright never mind that's fine for now alright let's just 
keep going. So now let's bring in some text. And uh, what a lot of people do is they have their render that says SOAR, but then they also, just to make sure that people read it, they add a text that, says, that also says SOAR. So we're going to do exactly that. Go to your text tool, press T on your keyboard, and then I'm going to be using a font called Typography Pro or Typograph Pro. Uh, I'm going to be using the semi-bold and then all caps, just type SOAR. And I'm going to show you a couple of tricks that Photoshop uh, has to offer. And they're right here. So if you see this little option with a T with a little arc beneath it, just click it. And then on the style, this gives you a bunch of different options. So usually what I go with is uh, arc. And I turn down the arc a little bit. I boost up the horizontal distortion on one end. And then... I add a vertical distortion and what this does is it makes it look like it's actually leaning back or it just there's so many different effects you just have to mess around with them until you find one that you like so I'm pretty happy with that let's the placement I would recommend never putting it somewhere like intrusive or like on top of your render or anything like that try to find a place that doesn't get in the way of anything so I'm just going to leave it on the side for now. And this seems kind of plain, so right click, rasterize type, and that, that makes it an image, so you can no longer edit that, keep that in mind. And this time we're going to duplicate our text twice. On the top layer, you're going to double click, go into your layer style, and you're just going to check off the green, then go into your second copy, and then check off the red and the blue. And we're going to do the RGB split. This is a very popular effect that I've been using personally a lot just because I find that it's, it looks really, really good for text like this. And so basically what you're going to do is you're going to grab the very top one and you're going to, using your arrow keys, while you have the move tool selected, you're just going to tap a couple times to the left, then get your other copy and tap a couple times to the right. Now th this looks kind of messy from close, but from far away it gives a nice effect and uh, I think it's just much better than just the plain old text, just like that. So let's leave it like that for now. Let's just merge these all together. And now, using uh, our loop tool, or our lasso tool, excuse me, you're just, your default is most likely going to be lasso. If you click and hold, it'll bring down a drop-down menu, and you just want to click on the polygonal uh, lasso tool. And now what we're going to do is we're kind of just going to put some cuts in this just to make it look like a bit more glitchy. So what I tend to do is I click, click, and then I try to do a, a pretty something close to a rectangle. And then I'm just going to do the same thing over here. Hold shift. If you want to make another selection, uh, hold shift. And then you can just continue. There we go. So that looks pretty good for now. Now what you want to do is control X to cut and then control V to paste. Then go back to your move tool and let's position this. Um, let's see. So that looks pretty good actually. So a little bit either a little bit to the right or a little bit more to the left. And what this does is it gives us sort of this glitchy effect, which in my opinion looks really, really good. So let's just leave it like that. That looks fine for now. You can do as many cuts as you want, uh, but just make sure that it's, it's legible. And uh, now let's go into our filter. So select your first layer, hold shift, and select the very, very last one. Then you're just going to drag and drop them into your folder icon right here. And what that does is it groups them into a folder. Hit control J to duplicate it, and then control E. And so basically what that does is you no longer have a bunch of loose stocks. Now it's all one image. And this makes it much easier to work with when using filters and uh, other effects like that. So let's just duplicate that one more time. Go into Filter, Filter Gallery, Stylize Glowing Edges, and then click OK. Go to Overlay, bring down the opacity, duplicate those again, Control J to duplicate it, then go to your Blurs. And this is, this is just my personal opinion. This is what I like to do. Go to Lens Blur. 
and these are my um, these are my settings right here. I tend to just mess with the radius usually between six and eight. So I'm just gonna go with seven for now. Click OK, and this gives it actually that's a bit too little. Uh, let's turn up the blur radius a bit. Uh, let's go with nine or ten. Okay, twelve. We're gonna go big. Okay, yeah, that's good. Now you're gonna get your eraser tool, and there's different ways of doing this. This is just uh, I'm gonna show you both ways. First of all, is manually using your eraser, and you just want to click on some random parts of your text, some parts that you want uh, to stand out, like the logo, but not all of it. So make sure that some of the parts are left blurry. And what it does is it gives it a nice 3D effect and it gives it a bit of depth of field and uh, depth of view or whatever. So let's just do that on the logo too up here. And that looks pretty good. So this is one way. The other way is duplicate. So let's apply the filter again. The other way is using um, the, the lasso tool. And uh, actually, my mistake. What you want to do is you duplicate it with no blur. Then you just want to select some random triangles or any shapes, honestly, throughout your background. And they don't have to be this big, but you just want to pick out some uh, some parts that you want to be blurred. So just select everything. Oh, my bad. Make sure you're holding shift. That's important. And there we go. And then you're going to do Command-Shift-I, and then you're going to blur it. And uh, Command-Shift-I, delete, sorry. And so what this does is Command-Shift-I is the shortcut for inverse select. So basically, after you've selected these, after you clicked Control-Shift-I, it selects everything around them. And so basically, right now, we're left with just these triangles right here. And what we're going to do is we're going to blur them. So just apply the lens blur to your triangles. And it's not supposed to leave little lines like that. But as you can see, what it does is it leaves a nice nice effect uh, on, your, on your background. Personally, I prefer just to do it manually using your eraser. It just gives you way more, um, way more like personal. You're, you're able to personalize it much more easily. And uh, it's just looks better in my opinion. So let's just do that again. Let's apply the filter, use my eraser, and whoop, my bad. Okay, continue. Get it close to the top. There we go. So that, that looks all right. And uh, that's actually pretty much it, guys, because uh, we've covered everything on how to make this background. So yeah. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this. Uh, if you did, make sure to drop a like and a comment. I was kind of disappointed with my last upload. Part 2 did not get that much support. So if this video could get uh, maybe 50 or 60 likes, uh, I'll upload episode 2 in 2 days. And I'll upload the first part in 2 days. And it's going to be a pretty awesome style. So hopefully you guys uh, are looking forward to that. So just remember to check out uh, Hetra and Sinner Arts, which are both in the description. And yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. Peace out, and stay sexy. One last part. Uh, if you want to export your background to make it really good quality, uh, what a lot of people do is file, save as, save it as a PNG. You don't want to do that. Go to the option right beneath that, file, save for web. You're just going to select that. Then as the preset, make it PNG24, and then check interlace right here, and then just save it. And that's uh, as good as a quality as it can get. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. So, uh, yeah, peace out.